looking at this uh, tank for a fault with the wash, it drips the power out. First thing we notice when we're taking the screws out is uh, it's all wet along the bottom here. There's water dripping, so maybe we've got a leaking hose or something and it's filled something up with water. Right, well, that's quite bad. Um, that's all for the condensation. You're looking at a, over a grand if these two boards fail. It'll be 1200 quid to uh, replace them. These are obsolete now. Uh, it's like a sauna. So, you know, it's, it's the fitting on the hot hose. It's filled everything up with water. That's a new one, first time I've seen that. Right, we've turned the water off. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, there we go. It's got a crack on the hot water fitting, so we're going to need a washing machine hose or something. Uh, that's all for a condensation. Um, dump bell's wet, water, the motor's wet. My money would be on the motor. It might just be the terminal box if we're lucky. So that's not really waterproof that connection. Um, hopefully, well, obviously the water's got inside that box because it's got um, condensation in these two. So uh, we'll have to dry them out. It's pretty bad. But I think we'll start taking the cover off the pump. Okay, I've just took the lid off of the uh, pump and you can see the uh, line on the um, lid of the box and how high the water have got. Um, I think that's probably high enough to have got into the motor. Unfortunately. Hopefully the dump valve's okay. Take the cover off of that box and see what's going on in there. And we'll probably take the, well, we will. We take the lids off of these and try and dry them out. Um, I expect we've got a little pool of water in the bottom of the box. Actually, they don't look too bad. Well, I've took the cover off of this one. This is the uh, wash controller. Um, box and you can see it's got water in the bottom so it's filled those fuses up with water, we'll have to chuck those away um, I expect this one's similar so we'll, we'll get the uh, lids off of them um, and see if we can get the compressors running and pop them in front of there, in front of the condensers and get some warm air blowing through them Done done one screw in the bottom of that box, and that is water coming out of there. So it's, it's amazing. Uh, the thing's been running at all. These are a pain because as soon as you take the, the screws out the hole, you've got the weight of these two pumps on there. They've got quite heavy motors on them, um, and the cables aren't long enough to do anything with them and then the chemical tubes are a bit tight so keep running out of memory since bloody phones do an upgrade that might be the last Apple product I get I'm getting sick of them um, anyway yeah got a load of water pouring out of there so hopefully it's not gone into that switch um, anyway, I'll get a cover off and then we'll have another look luckily it don't look too bad in there they don't look too great, but there's not. Some of these have an awful lot more components in than this does. So we've got a bit of damp on the two wires for each coil. Uh, the motors look okay. Um, hopefully that that connector's not too bad. Switches all right. So 
bit of damp in that switch, but it's, it's not, it's nowhere near as bad as it was in the Xbox. Turn that off without turning the compressors off, and I'm using them to drive the circuit board at the moment. So uh, before we start playing all this too much, we'll turn everything off. So if that water's touching something live, but it's not earth because it's a plastic box, you, it, it would chip off and I'll use anything. But you certainly feel it if you put your finger in there. These have dried out nicely. We'll get those put back on. Well, I've got the leads off the cold water valve. Um, nice. 50 gigabytes, it's fine. But it is actually here, I'll just check out, that's good. Yeah, that's good. We've got it after the step. Um, I should know about that's probably not a very good place to work on these things. So go on, go on to a um, electric. Anyway, we'll check both of these. I expect they're going to be fine. I expect these are okay. Probably it's going to be definitely the motor, possibly the dump valve. But we'll, we'll get this done and we'll put the lid on this box. Um, I've got the hot air gun still running, just blowing some warm air about them. That's all dried out. Uh, water back on. Right, now we're into the water pump. Um, they also use the, the same box to terminate the um, dump valve um, connection, so we've, we've got that disconnected now. Um, if you're not familiar with something, before you start taking the wires out, it pays to either take a photo or probably better is to do a little sketch. Um, I have in the past took um, picture of something so that I could uh, look at it when I wanted to rewire it and um, in between me taking it apart and putting it back together the camera died and so I was stuck with that's just working out so you're probably better off doing a little sketch anyway it's 230 mega ohms that it's pretty good let's try it on the neutral if the coil was blown the neutral side could be shorted um, the live side could be okay. So let's just confirm we've got a good earth. Yeah. So the dump valve checks out okay. So we'll disconnect the uh, pump wires um, and then see, see what that's like. Right, we've just tested the pump um, and that's shown a, shown a short. <coughs> I've got to be careful doing this because I could easily, if that was damp, I'd get a belt through my finger. Um, but what we'll do, I think, is disconnect the capacitor and then check it again because that's upside down and it's been part submerged, so I, I bet that's full of water anyway. Um, I don't want to change the pump if I don't have to because it's not been on there that long, probably a couple of years. We'll uh, get some of these wires disconnected and see. Uh, still shows shorted. Um, I don't know if I can do this single-handed. Let's try again. There we go. 0.2. So, uh, and that has just got the um, motor windings and the thermistor connected. So, time for a new one. Luckily we've got one in stock. Um, we're going to drill uh, an extra hole in here because they, they, uh, they don't come. That's the factory ones from, from the pump manufacturers. And then you've got to drill an extra hole because their mounting brackets are closer together on these. And then also the outlet is in a different position. So we have to take the pump off. You can split it joint you just take all these bolts out about 10 of them um, to spin them around just, just be careful you make sure the, the o-ring goes back in place and you do all the bolts up if you, if you leave one loose a bit it will leak um, 
if they're not scary film then they are. So that's pretty much it. We've got to drill the holes, swap this round. Yeah, it goes back on there. That's inside the pump. It's like a vented uh, brake disc really. It spins around. That's the top half. And that's the O-ring. It's got to sit in there really. It wants to sit in that groove. Let's take the box out. Because if we tip that, the O-ring here, all the box are going to fall out. And that's, that's all we uh, match up. Be careful because they drop out and get in the fan guard. Let's go and catch them as you're undone. Washing. We've got a new. That's the old one. We've got a replacement one in there. Check it for leaks in a bit.